So we're in the build shop. Um, mm -hmm. This is gonna be a pretty cool process. We literally just finished over in the fitting bay. Yep. Take me through kind of what you do once you've got the spec sheet kind of comes from the fitter. Mm -hmm. Obviously you wrote down T100 heads. We know mm -hmm. exactly what shaft. I saw you swing weighting and doing some uh, weighing over in the, um, uh, in the fitting studio, which is good. Correct. So you've basically baselined the exact club that I was using. Yes. Once they've sent that over to you in the build shop, kind of take me through how it goes from there. So we collect all the components. Yep. The club heads, the shafts, and the grips. Uh, we make sure that we weight sort them properly based off of how we measure the demo club. Gotcha. So from the demo club, we know the exact length, we know the exact swing weight that we need to work with. And that's what people always, I think, are concerned about. They go, I tested this club, even if it's at a demo day, I hit mm -hmm. it great. I'm kind of concerned that when I get the club sent to me, yeah. it's gonna be a little bit different. And, and I get that because mm -hmm. in reality, if you don't go through this extremely meticulous process that I know we're about to go through, mm -hmm. you actually, in fact, are gonna receive a slightly different balanced product than what you tested. We wanna build things to the player. Gotcha. So whatever created that impact in the bay, whatever produced that performance that we really desire, that's what we wanna impart on these products. So the way that they arrive to us are definitely not how they leave. And that's something that's really interesting that I don't think everyone understands is all these heads have come in, these are Titleist heads. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them has been weighed to the decimal of a gram. Mm -hmm. There's different categories. Sometimes you can get a lighter head weight so that you can build a long set, for example. Correct. So you can get a heavier head weight if you wanna build a short set. Right. So you've taken every single component, you've weighed them all individually, you've, you're specking it out, you've mm -hmm. done the same thing with the shafts. Correct. Because obviously shafts are nice tight tolerances from someone like Nippon, but they can vary little tiny amounts. Yes. So everything is completely weighed individually so that when you go to build the club, you wanna basically achieve the exact swing weight that you're trying to get throughout the set. Maybe the most interesting part of this is if you wanna get something built really to what a tour tolerance would be or like the very best tolerances, you really can't just take the head, glue the shaft in, trim it down and put a grip on it. Right. You do need to make these micro adjustments so that mm -hmm. every single club, as you say, it balances and feels exactly the same throughout. Yeah, it's one way to just cut and glue. Yeah. It's another thing to understand what you're cutting and what you're gluing together. Yeah. Because if you are if you have a target in terms of how you want it to feel, mm -hmm. then there are certain ways you have to handle the problem. Absolutely, yeah. very cool. So I think the best way to present this, guys, is hopefully that gave you a, a kind of a rundown of how meticulous these guys are with taking components, then not just taking it out of the box and kind of putting them together. Right. This process is important to kind of make sure you know what you're working with. Mm -hmm. Now what we're gonna do is literally just, I'm gonna follow Matt as he builds a couple clubs, let you guys see exactly what goes on. I'll ask some questions to kind of clarify and hopefully give you an idea of kind of the amount of kind of work and diligence that goes into building a set. Awesome. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so this, this stage, obviously step one, tell me basically what we're doing. We're prepping the head for the shaft insertion, obviously? Right, so we want to make sure that the hosels are nice and clean and okay. that they're, they're tapered out to the right size to fit the shaft nice and snug. Gotcha. So initially what I'll do is I'll take a tapered reamer, which is technically the size of what the hosel should be. Okay. Okay, so we'll take the reamer, just really quickly all the way down to the bottom, making sure that there's really nothing sticking out of the hosels just from manufacturing there. Next thing we'll take is uh, just a little wire brush here. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll actually take a sanding bit to give it more of a rougher texture. And the sanding bit is, that's helpful for the epoxy, obviously, to create a rougher surface. Correct. I mean, the wire brush does a pretty good job, but we want to make sure that we get into that raw metal properly. Gotcha. Now, we're not going to do it too much because we don't want to make the hosel out of round. We want to make sure that it, 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 okay. it retains its integrity as a structure. Gotcha. So just really quickly. And we just want to rough it up enough to make sure that we have a really strong bond between the shaft and the club head. Very cool. And that's basically how we would prep each and every club. Yep. Just to make sure that every shaft fits the same depth and the same, um, just in the same position with every club. Perfect. So we prepared the club head itself, yep. the hosel of the club. Now you're gonna prepare the, the tip of the shaft Correct. for um, gluing into the head itself. Right, so much like with the iron hosel, we wanna make sure that we get to the raw metal. So right. underneath this chrome plating, uh, is where we want to be. We all obviously want to prep enough that it covers majority of the hosel, even slightly just a bit peeking out.
All right, so you've prepped the tip of the shaft. Now basically you need to cut it to length? Correct. And we've got, what are we building right now? So we're building a seven iron. Okay. So the length on your seven iron was fit to 37 inches, yes. which is what our standard is. Yep. Okay, so we've got our head hosel prepped. We've got our shaft prepped. You can kind of see we've left a little bit of that space for of the, for the rough the finish yep. for the ferrule, right? So now we're just gonna measure this out on our ruler here. It's just to 37 inches. We cut to length. We don't cut lengths um, to compensate for grip caps. I'm with you. Unless it's specified by the client, right. it's something that they prefer, or their coach prefers that. We've got our line. We'll just take it over to our saw here. Right. Should we get it right on there? All right. Just as easy as that. We'll do a quick length check, make sure we weren't high or low. It looks to be right on the line, so Perfect. now we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Definitely have heard a lot of people ask about spining process. Sure. A lot of people will say, is it worth it? Does, you know, the builder I work with doesn't do it, or he mm -hmm. asked me if I should, you know, or if I want to do it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. So tell me briefly, it is a standard practice that you guys do at UGP, yes. obviously something you feel is valuable. What we want to do is just find the soft side of the shaft. Gotcha. Okay, so the shaft, the part of the shaft that's going to allow it to flex the most. Right. We align it in a certain way that creates more of a consistent oscillation. Right. When it's within a vise. Does that matter to the player? Probably not. Right. But what, it does matter to we builders. Yeah. Because it proves to us that we've aligned that product in the best possible way and the most consistent way from club to club. So it's not so much in a sense, if I'm only building one iron, yeah. it might not matter as much as if I'm building a whole set of irons. So Makes if you sense. got six, seven or eight clubs, you generally want them to be built within the same parameters. A hundred percent. And I hear so many people and they're rightfully concerned oh, my eight iron feels a bit different or they, they've mm -hmm. invested and let's be honest, golf clubs are very expensive. Yep. No one wants to think that maybe the clubs don't feel or react, Correct. or maybe there's variables. So what you're talking about to me is it's a lot of like um, really nice peace of mind yeah. for the golfer. There are no variables about the way your clubs have been built. They are all going to react and play the same. Hey, are you a robot? Are you going to notice it on the course? Maybe not. Right. But mentally, I would say knowing for sure that your clubs have been built that way is it's just nice to know, right? So something as simple as you know this machine here is just got a few ball bearing wheels on it mm -hmm. okay so we basically just want to throw the shaft in and this is already pre-cut to our finished length gotcha so this is how it's going to be epoxied into the club right i would leave a little leeway for the grip itself uh -huh. so we want to measure what's underneath the grip and we're just going to add some pressure to the tip end so that we can see a bow and we're going to rotate it it's nice about this shaft is that you can see that logo go around and around and at some point, there's a catch to it to where it just wants to rotate itself back to the soft side. Interesting. Okay. So right in there is kind of where it's going to be. So unfortunately, this logo is going to be right on top. That's okay. Right. So here it being the soft side, this is where we're going to mark it. Okay. So now we have a reference to how we're going to align this shaft within the hosel. Understood, yeah. Right. So when we actually go to epoxy, we're going to take that label, which represents that soft side, mm -hmm. and we're actually going to align it to the heel side of the club this way. Right. Okay. And basically what that means, just from a builder standpoint, if it's going to flex the most this way, yes. when we're swinging down into the ball and droop happens, there'll be less of it. So the next thing we're going to do is um, measure out some epoxy. Okay. You're going to weigh it? Yeah. Gotcha. Going to weigh it. So it's because it's a two part, it's a two part epoxy. Right. So evenly weighted for both parts. Um, What's that you're pouring in there now? So I'm o I always use uh, shaft beads. Oh, okay. Right, so. Is I'll, it like a metal, like a very fine metal bead basically? It's like glass beads. Oh, it's glass, okay. Yeah, cool. we, we could also use something that's a little bit more thick. It's kind of like got a sand consistency. Yeah. But that's really only if the shaft and the hosel don't, fit very fit well properly. okay and right. this is just really adding more of a strong bond basically 
Is well, it, it just fills in gaps. Fills in gaps, okay. Right, so the, the glass beads and the, and the centering beads, they don't add to the adhesion. Yep. But what it does is it'll kind of make the, make the epoxy thicker. Makes sense. So that it'll... So there's no space, basically. Yeah. Correct, yeah. because you want the shaft to sit as evenly as possible within the hosel there. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll give this a good mix. I probably over mix compared to other builders. Okay. Just because I really wanted to be sure. It's almost like I wait for the reaction to happen. And once I start feeling the heat in the cup, yeah. I know it's ready to go. Gotcha. So epoxy's mixed, what are we doing now? So now I'm gonna make sure that we're gonna set it to this proper swing weight that we had it targeted for. Gotcha. Okay, so at the cut length, we'll throw this in without grip. Generally speaking, your standard size grips are gonna add about 10 points. So we're starting it at E1.4. Okay. Okay, if I wanna have a finished overall swing weight of D5. Yes. I'm actually gonna get this to E5. Right. Okay, because we are adding an extra wrap of tape. Hopefully the epoxy that I add is going to add that point and then the grip will, the wrap will actually bring it back down. Gotcha. That will balance the club once it's actually finished building. Correct. So we're going to try and get four points on it now, right? So every two grams that we add should add a point. Right. And I say should because sometimes it doesn't equate as perfect as we'd like. So that's a brass tip what you've just added there and it's eight grams? Correct. Okay. So we're going to add our tip weight here. So now we're at E5. Gotcha. Okay. So after epoxy, without grip, without wraps, it should end up about E6. Mm -hmm. Once we get those wraps on and get that standard grip on there, it should be at D5. And that's exactly what we measured in the fitting bay, and you want to make it feel the way that I tested it and have the same feel. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll take our epoxy. And again, I always tend to glue the, the ferrules down, so I'll dab the tip just a little bit just to get a little bit underneath the ferrule. I'm okay. not gonna overdo it, just, yep. just a little bit, okay? So then we'll actually add a little bit of epoxy for our weight, make sure it doesn't rattle in there. Right, so it's very secure inside. Correct. So we'll just dab the inside there, and then I'm just gonna rotate this in, kind of coat the, the tip weight along with the inside of the shaft, okay? And then I'll actually use the club head to uh, get the ferrule oh, onto okay. its finished position. position. Right. Epoxy before I start to add on here, and I'm pretty liberal with it because again, I don't want there to be any doubt that this thing is going to stay on. Gotcha. Okay. It's got to be able to survive speed as well as miss hits. I'm going to so. be miss hitting a few of those. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> it's not going to have some things to survive. Not for long, my friend. <laughs> so we'll get that on pretty liberally. And the way that I, I want to make sure the whole inside of the hosel is coated, so I'll actually run it through a couple times. Okay. And I'm rotating it as it goes in because I want it to spread. Gotcha. As we get closer to the ferrule, it'll kind of clump up just a little bit. And I'll just collect a little bit of that and run it through again. And again, always rotating so that we're spreading the epoxy throughout. Very cool. And I'll actually just start to rotate this, listen for any popping, because that's usually the air pockets that are gonna be coming out. So you're releasing that and making sure the epoxy's pure in there and filling in space. Correct. And you okay. just gave it a little cleanup of any excess? Just a little bit. And then I wanna make sure that I remember where my spine mark is. Make sure that it's right on the heel side before I give it a final wipe down here. Now that it's cured and we have the added weight from the epoxy, we're just gonna check it dry without the grip. Gotcha. To see if we actually got that adjustment that right. we were hoping Double for. Double check that you get it to that weight. So like clockwork, E6. Nice. And where we started E5 before we added the epoxy. Right, and you said it was gonna be about a point? Correct. Yeah. So we went one over the D5 requirement because we know we're adding one more layer of tape. So I'm gonna measure the first uh, uh, wrap of tape without the grip cap. Okay. So I just kinda use it as a measurement. Just pull it all the way to the end here. And basically what I do is I set that line where the grip cap is up against the edge of the shaft and where we place the tape because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure we account for the expansion width-wise right. and not just length-wise. So we don't cover it all the way to the end because that would be stretching. 
and that should basically be just to the end of the shaft if I measured it properly. All right. So with stepped shafts, I, we usually smooth it out a little bit more because we don't want a lot of air pockets or space between the layers, right? Kind of just smooth it out. I'm sure you've seen this online. Yeah, so you're really a lot of just people making doing sure there's it. absolutely nothing. Yeah, we just there. take a little bit more time. We could smooth it out with our hands, but it's just a little bit more solid gotcha. there and especially along the seams here. Now, because of the seam, because of where it overlaps, when we put on the other wrap, it'd be the other way. Oh, okay. Just so it's not compounding on oh, the seam okay. itself. So you reverse it so that you don't double up on the seam. Yeah, Correct. that's cool. So as I went on top the first time, I'm gonna go underneath the second round, just so that that seam doesn't compound. Just make sure it's nice and flat on all sides. And then same thing, just because it has a step butt end, mm. as opposed to like a Project X or a C taper or something, like we just kind of smooth it out. Right. I would say logo up is the most common. Yeah. Some people don't want any reference on the top. Interesting. For the thumbs, they want to focus on the club head, so we'll take that reference away from them. Okay. Or they just not used to seeing it. Yeah. You know, because a lot of grips nowadays are like a Tour Velvet or a Crossline 360. Yes. So it's the same all the way around anyway. So it doesn't matter as much. Yeah, yeah. You don't necessarily want your player to be, the focus to be taken away from the club head. Makes sense. So if, if there's any crookedness in here, it really draws your eye. And, and most players are very, very aware. Yeah. All the components of the club are now in place. Correct. This is where you really make sure that the final club is the exact D5 that you were aiming for when we first started. Correct. So okay. we know we're at the right length. Just want to make sure that the weight of the grip, the weight of the wrap, yeah. displace that point. Gotcha. And we'll see where we ended up here. Okay. D5.3. It's pretty good. Can you deal with 0.3? I will 100% so. deal with 0.3, yeah. Uh, maybe if I take that I plastic wrap off, it yeah, might help. There's a gram so. there. Let's see. One thing people might not understand is my spec is basically going to be standard. Yes. Heads do come from manufacturers as standard, but there is a little bit of manufacturing tolerance. So you're using that machine to just make sure it's exactly spot on. You always just want to double check. Yeah. Right. You, we, you can't trust what the paper says unless you see it with your own eyes. So we basically try to feel that degree and hopefully that angle took care of the loft as well. There you go. So from here, we basically clean up that ferrule wipe down the shaft and we're on and off and running. Repeat for the rest of the set. Yes, sir. Okay, so finished golf club. Pretty cool to see that whole process. Thanks. It looks, uh, it obviously looks extremely good. I probably don't have to tell anyone that. Cool to see that final process, turning the ferrule. Mm -hmm. I did go with the sort of UGP themed uh, uh, BB and F Co. BB and F Co, yeah. Guys, hopefully you could see from that, I mean, like an extremely careful, meticulous process kind of like making golf clubs in a lab, really, like the amount to which you're controlling weights of stuff, you're measuring the weight of glue, you're making sure there's no air bubbles or mixtures, like all that kind of stuff is really the reason why someone would go kind of here versus somewhere else. That's why you'd want your clubs built at a place like this. Um, so guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. It was fun for me to see that process kind of in detail. I've definitely seen clubs built before, but kind of seeing the whole process is definitely a new one for me. So um, let me know what you guys thought. Leave us some comments. Um, I probably won't be able to answer them myself, but I can get in touch with Matt. If you have any yeah. kind of really specific build questions that uh, we can answer, maybe there's something that we didn't quite get to or something you're more curious about that we can expand on, yeah. um, we'd be happy to get back to you and give you a little bit more information. Absolutely. Thanks for doing this with me. My pleasure. Okay, guys, thanks for right. watching.